Hello friends, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we are taking a look at how we can run uh, virtual machines securely on your M1 MacBook Pros. So previously, if you are you are running uh, Intel MacBook Pros, you are familiar with running virtual machines using VirtualBox or VMware Fusion. Currently, on the M1 MacBooks, uh, these two solutions are not that. Uh, great and uh, they are in technical preview releases for either VirtualBox or VMware Fusion. Uh, so we are going to take a look at another app that is uh, that has recently launched in the market related to running virtual machines on your Apple M1 MacBook Pros. So over here we are going to be taking a look at uh, UTM and we will use UTM to install Kali Linux on our MacBook Pro. So let's get started. So UTM, a uh, little bit background about UTM is UTM is an open source uh, software and it is based on QEMU uh, emulator, which is also open source and this will remain open source. So over here, you will get a few options to download UTM Pro for your uh, Mac OS system. So the first one is going to the download section and downloading the DMG file. And the other option is going to the Apple Mac store and uh, Apple Store on Mac and, and searching uh, for UTM app there. Uh, over in the App Store, the UTM app is paid and the reason for uh, the price tag is to support the development of this project. Uh, you can also download the, uh, the uh, UTM app for free from the website as well. The only difference between the, um, the direct download and the app store version is that uh, for updates you will have if you have installed uh, using the direct download link you will not get automatic updates but if you have installed utm using app store you will get automatic updates on the app store so you don't have to manually go ahead and install any updates so i will be using the direct download version so just download the dmg and after that mm, open up where you have downloaded that, uh, that DMG file, just open the DMG file and you will be uh, shown this window. Just drag and drop the UTM app into applications folder. So over here, I have already uh, done this and it is installed on my system. The next step is we need to download Kali Linux ISO. So to do that, you will need to go to Kali, uh, Kali.org and over here, click on download and you will be brought to this page just scroll down and over here you will see this option uh, download Kali Linux 64 bit 32 bit and Apple Silicon so uh, it is recommended to go with Apple Silicon because it is natively supported uh, as an ARM solution uh, ARM architecture on M1 so we can't run x64 bit architecture we need to run ARM based uh, distros over here so just download the the installer file and once you are downloaded this file uh, this is around 3.2 gigs so it uh, the download time may depend on the internet speed that you have so once this is download uh, downloaded uh, save it into a folder over here you can see i have it downloaded into another folder so once you have downloaded downloaded both files just uh, open up a, your spotlight and search for utm app open the utm app so this is the interface so you can see it is a really clean interface and it thought, uh, it also follows mac os theming so just click on create new virtual machine over here and there you will be given two options either virtualize or emulate so virtualize is uh, used when the iso file or the uh, operating system you are trying to install you have downloaded the arm version of that operating system and you need to virtualize that on the native cpu architecture but let's say if you have downloaded uh, another uh, operating system that does not have a native um, release for that OS, you can download the x86 version and then you have to select emulate. So uh, the M1, M1's ARM architecture will then emulate x86 in order for you to run that uh, operating system on your M1 system. So over here, we, as we have downloaded the ARM version, we are going to select virtualize 
and now we need to sell, uh, select which operating system we want so we are going to be running Linux so just select Linux and over here you will be given this option uh, to use Apple virtualization we don't want that we are going to be using QEMU uh, virtualization for this and then uh, the most important option over here that we need to select is the boot ISO image so just click on browse and go to wherever directory you have the ISO file stored in and just select that ISO file uh, once you have done that click on continue then over here we need to specify the RAM uh, we want to allocate to this VM so I'm going to allocate around 6 gigs to this VM uh, as I have 16 GB RAM on my system and also select enable hardware open OpenGL acceleration so this uh, this makes sure that uh, when you are using the VM uh, the whole display is not that finicky and it runs smoothly as possible so just uh, check that and click continue and this is going to ask for how much storage space do you want to give this VM so I'm going to go with the default 64 GBs and click continue uh, and if you want to add a shared drive to your VM you can do that but I am not currently going to do that so click on continue and over here we just need to rename the VM to watch whatever name you want so I am going to be rename, uh, renaming this to Kali and over here you can see all the different settings that you have configured for this so click save now uh, this has created our vir uh, virtual machine over here and you can see all the settings that we have configured so there are a few things that you need to uh, do before uh, running the VM so uh, these are important steps so make sure you follow these so uh, once the VM is created you can see over here this is the settings icon for this VM click on that and over here under devices you will need to add a new serial device so once you have added a serial device you can change the font size uh, to whatever you want so click save and another thing that you might want to uh, keep in mind is uh, as I am running Mac OS Ventura so you might need to uh, give permission for the whole disk, uh, disk and folder access to uh, UTM so in order to do that go to your settings and under settings uh, privacy and security and you will see a full disk access option over here just click that and over here if you don't see UTM over here just click on add and select the file over here and it will uh, add this to the list and just enable full disk access to UTM and restart the UTM app so this will solve any issues uh, while you are running uh, the VM related to file not found or uh, permission uh, does not have permission to open the ISO file. So those are the issues that you need to uh, take a look. If you face those, you need to enable full disk access for the UTM app. Uh, once these are done, just click on start and you will see that uh, there are multiple windows uh, open right now. So for the installation process to complete, we need to have these windows open. So the first one is going to just uh, stay stuck at a blinking cursor. So we will be working with the terminal one. So just uh, go over here and we are going to select graphical install and continue. Uh, it will start booting up the VM uh, into the installer. So over here we need to select our uh, language and, and our uh, area. So once you are uh, done that you will be asked to select your keyboard mapping. So I am going to mm, select American English. And just give it a few seconds. It is going to load all the necessary components that are required for the installation to uh, run and complete successfully. So now over here we need to uh, give the host name for the VM so I am just going to select the host name continue domain name
and this is the user that will be created uh, so i have selected uh, entered the username that i want click continue continue and over here we need to set up a password so make sure that uh, the password is really secure so i am going to add a very secure password and now we need to select the time zone so over here i'm just going to go with the central time zone and hit enter and it is going to go ahead and download all the relevant packages that it need from the internet server and now we need to select the uh, disk that we want to install this vm on so uh, over here i'm just going to select use uh, entire disk and hit enter so now that we have selected use entire disk uh, it will show us the uh, single partition that we have within our uh, vm uh, select that partition and we are going to select the first option all files in one partition uh, as the, as we are running this in a vm so we do, uh, it does not cause any problem if we use a single partition for all of this but if you are going to be installing this on your main system uh, it is recommended that you create separate partition for each uh, files uh, each uh, file schema uh, so that uh, you don't run into any major crashes or any issues so i'm just going to select all files in one partition and enter and now it is going to create all uh, all the uh, partition mapping that is that uh, that is required for uh, our disk in order to install kali linux so it will give uh, show you all the uh, partitions it has created so once that's done, just uh, select finish partition and write to disk and hit enter and select yes and hit enter. Now it is going to create all those partition and start installing the base system on our VM. So I'm going to pause uh, the video uh, and I will be back once the installation process is done. So during the installation process, you might be asked to select what kind of different desktop environments that you want. So I'm just going to go with the default desktop environment uh, because I, I don't have a uh, preference for either GNOME or KDE. So I'm just going with XFC. Uh, it is fast and uh, a really reliable desktop environment to run. So I'm just going to go with the default settings and click continue and now it is going to install all those packages uh, for our desktop environment as well as uh, the top 100 or 10 tools that are uh, necessary for security testing within the Kali Linux so it will take some time uh, and it also depends uh, on the internet connection speed that you have uh, in some cases it might need to download some packages off the internet so make sure you have a good internet and stable internet connection uh, otherwise it won't install the latest version it will just install the uh, software uh, software version that are present within the ISO so just uh, let it run and we'll be back once the installation process is done so welcome back now the installation process is done and it is showing us this message installation is complete so now you can reboot your system so we are going to just click on continue and this is going to clean up and restart our system so now we'll just go ahead and uh, close this window and you can now close this window as well okay and once you have powered off the uh, vm we need to make a, a few changes again so go back to the settings and the serial uh, device that we added previously we need to remove that right click and remove and save now once that's done uh, go ahead and select your cd uh, drive and click clear so it will uh, eject our iso file that we attach to this vm and now if we uh, go ahead and click on start it will go ahead and boot up our kali linux vm without any other requirements so now as you can see here is the boot menu just click on kali linux gnu and hit enter and this is going to boot up the VM as you can see the speed of the VM is really good uh, the boot up time is not that great uh, so now we need to log into our account so uh, the username for our account was the Linux OS 
Okay. And the password was super secure, uh, secure, uh, secure password. And just log in. And we are, uh, we are in the main desktop environment, and everything will be working over here. As you can see over here, all the installation for different tools uh, tools are also working. So if we run GoBooster again, you can see the tool is now successfully installed, and we can go ahead and start uh, running different tools within our Kali Linux environment. So that's it for this video. Uh, oh, uh, I, I try to cover everything, and if something is missing, do let us know in the comments down below. And if you have uh, if you face any uh, errors or any issues while uh, installing Kali Linux do let us know and we will try to help thank you uh, uh, thank you for watching and have a good day and will you see uh, we'll see you in the next one thanks